the floor trusses on the 80th floor of the South Tower began to give way. Columns along the east wall began to buckle upwards, and the entire building began to come down. As the quarter-mile tall structure dissolved into a massive shroud of smoke and dust, thousands of people in the surrounding streets began to cry out in horror and disbelief. Then ran for their lives, pursued by an enormous billowing cloud of dust and debris. It never occurred to me that these two buildings would come down. So that when they did, it was the most shocking moment, maybe that I've ever had. That the South Tower began to tip forward and then righted itself and came down in what in memory seems like a slow motion moment. It happened in 10 seconds. 10 seconds, it's a knockout in boxing. The whole thing came down. Uh, it was just, to, to me still, it's a staggering moment in, in, uh, in New York, in any history, in, in world history, for a place that, uh, I'd never had anything like that happen to it ever before. The Empire State Building didn't come down. You could, 93, the 4,000 pound, pound bomb goes off in the basement, doesn't come down. This time it came down. This time they figured it out. And I thought, oh man, something new's happened here. At 10.28 a.m., 30 minutes after the South Tower fell, the television antenna atop the North Tower began to give way, followed a fraction of a second later by the upper floors of the building itself, as the entire North Tower now came down to. Then there was a release of heat that was off the scale, the fires ignited crushing and tearing was going on and chaos, mostly just chaos on some mathematical level was happening. You can't even describe it physically because it was too big, too chaotic. It was a cataclysmic release and it released back into the city in 10 seconds in each case. The surprising thing to me has always been how concentrated it was. They came straight down as if they were aimed directly at their foundations. And uh, of course, anything that was directly underneath no longer existed afterward. The so-called bathtub that ran six floors underground below street absorbed the brunt of the energy. Uh, inside that bathtub during those twin 10 second pulses, what was really happening, nobody can even imagine. We know what the results were. The results were, we were grappling with results inside that hole for the following nine months. Um, where in a sense, probably we'll be grappling with the results for years to come. I was upstate New York when I uh, heard of uh, the towers being destroyed. A side of me was not believing it. It was a very strange uh, blend of, of feelings. Um, one was the sorrow, the horror at uh, witnessing uh, human life being obliterated uh, for no reason, like that. And I felt something beyond words. I felt almost in a life part of me being squeezed to nothing, being extracted, an evisceration almost. It's an interesting question when you saw those two giant towers collapse almost cleanly on themselves. Where did they go? I have read in some architecture uh, article that uh, they were made mostly of air. If you consider the space between the solid molecules, uh, the steel, the concrete, the glass, the aluminum, there was a lot of air, it was mostly air actually. 
and uh, they disappeared and it, it's uh, where did they go was part of the, the disbelief that I was feeling because how you can make 200,000 tons of steel disappear uh, it's unbelievable in the end the half million tons of concrete steel glass and aluminum in each tower had hurtled to the ground in a virtual freefall traveling at a speed of 125 miles an hour Shock waves from the twin impacts were picked up more than 40 miles away by seismic instruments used for monitoring earthquakes. The immense columns of rubble and dust drifting away from ground zero could be clearly seen from outer space. I, I have to tell you, I didn't know whether the buildings were empty or whether there were tens of thousands of people in them. I, I just had no idea. and. I was, I was totally devastated by the fact that all those people were in there and this building that I had designed was perhaps falling on them. The buildings were not so important to me. I, I'm good at buildings, but people are another matter. It was a terrible event, absolutely terrible. I don't think you can measure the impact. It's absolutely enormous. Everybody felt it, but of course, those who felt it most and will never get over the effects are those who lost people. And the sheer numbers are so appalling, and the horror of the attack is so appalling that, in one sense, New York will never be the same. With the collapse of the second tower, an eerie quiet descended on New York. By 11 o'clock, hundreds of thousands of dazed and disheveled office workers, many covered in ashes and dust, could be seen marching north from the financial district, straggling uptown along the West Side Highway, or heading over the bridges to Brooklyn. Down at the site itself, hundreds of firemen and rescue workers groped their way across a surreal landscape of smoke and flames, at the edge of an immense seven-story pile of tangled steel and debris, searching desperately for any signs of life. All day, doctors and nurses in emergency rooms around the city braced for the anticipated onslaught of injured survivors that never came. Those who got out, got out, one nurse later said. Those who didn't, died. Around 5.20 in the afternoon, building number seven, a 47-story tower on the north side of Vesey Street, succumbed to a raging oil fire within and fell to the ground. One of the surprising things, you could call it almost a, a sad poetic justice, is that the only buildings that were completely destroyed by this collapse were the buildings that carried the Trade Center label, buildings one through seven. No other buildings with the exception of the small Orthodox church there that dissolved were destroyed. 